Yo, it's Akeem the Dream, and this is episode eight on Inside the Dream. We have special guest Jacoby Pettidu. How are you doing? Doing wonderful, man. How you doing? I was doing good until we had to restart this whole podcast because, you know, a thunderstorm, <laughs> or as Jacoby said, a thunderstorm. Hey, chill, man. He had a little grammar <laughs> issue, but it's just how it is, man. It's Florida weather, man. You know how it goes. Florida weather. Super bipolar, by the way. Of course. Always. Why? Like, Always. Why? I don't know, man. You've been living in Florida just as long as I have. That's how it always is. <laughs> this is why I want to move to Cali. Yeah, prime example. Cali. Went to Cali one time, and I'm still on Cali time. What time is it right now? Let's look <laughs> at the time. Exactly, like, what? what is the time? It is 7.01 Florida time. I am living at 4.01 right now as we speak, and I'm still on Cali time. I'll be back in Cali in May, so it's, hey it's man, okay. That's low-key. That's where I want to live at, man. That's where I want to live at. You want to. The only thing bad about Cali is the highways. I think I told you this off camera and everything like that, but mm-hmm. like Cali, the highways, the man, it's like you're on a highway. I don't remember the highway. Sorry about every sorry everybody who lives in Cali, but I'm, I don't remember the exact highway. I will remember in May when I go back, but I do not remember the exact highway. But the highway that we were on, when you get off an exit, it like splits into like two exits. And it's like one exit, I believe, will take you off of, like, the highway mm-hmm. and, all, like, on, like, a, a state road or whatever. And then the other highway or the other exit will take you on another highway. And it's like you're going, like, the same direction. It's just very <laughs> weird because, like, Florida, we have I-4 or I-95, and it's yeah. just straight. You go in south or you go in north. Simple as that. Do you Do you comprehend? No, I, I, comprehend, <laughs> I comprehend. I just I haven't been to Cali, bro, like. Traveling wise, I've only been to what Florida, Alabama, Georgia, New Orleans, and Kentucky and Bahamas. Like I haven't been anywhere in the Pacific, so that's why I actually want to move there. I want to live on the beach in Cali, so like it's kind of interesting. I'm actually over here trying to like actually, as you say it, I'm trying to vision it in my head what you're trying to go, what you're taking me through. And I've heard so many people that actually went to Cali. Like I know the traffic is terrible over there. Oh, dude. <laughs> I kid you not, man. It was like a 30-minute ride probably took us an hour. But It was probably like double. But I know you were in the Tesla, so you're chilling, though. I was in the Tesla. <laughs> I know you were in the Shout Tesla. Shout out to Elon Musk, man, because, dude, I don't have the money for a Tesla right now. But when I do, <laughs> first purchase I'm buying is a freaking Tesla. The autopilot in that is ridiculous. The way it just, like, speeds up. Oh, God, man. <laughs> You love that Tesla, man. Oh, yeah. When I go back, same Tesla. Shout out to Robert from Turo. Shout out to Robert, man. Shout out to Robert. I'm about to check that Turo out, man. Hit up Robert. Robert? Yeah, I'll send you you the exact car so it's the exact person, but shout out to Robert. My man, Rob. We're getting off topic, man. So uh, let's forget about Cali. We'll go to Cali in a couple. uh, Probably next month we'll go to Cali together. But, you know, I just had this one question. So you are... You are, so you're an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I'm an entrepreneur, but you started a little bit before me. So you have like, I'd say a year and a half of advance on me, and you obviously know a lot more than me. Not just in the entrepreneur field, but you know a lot more than me in life. And I just want to know what success really means to you. Got it. Good question. So success to me, it it it's different for everyone. You know. Cause, because you can be living in a different country. You can be living in a different state. You can be living in Puerto Rico making, you know, 2500 uh, 25000 or 2500 uh You could be like making a certain amount of income over in Puerto Rico, but making uh, may- maybe a million dollars over here in the U.S. And income... Well, Puerto Rico is U.S. with... Yeah, but, you know, the cu- the currency is different. Like, maybe if you're in Colombia, it's like... the cur- the, the currency in each, like, country, each state, it's different. That is true. And... You could be making a certain amount of money over there in uh, Puerto Rico or Colombia and be rich over there, and then you come over here and you're making the same amount of money, and it's, you know, you're not you're not uh, as affluent, you're not as wealthy, you're not ma- as rich, you're not making a, as much money over there, and so it's different, you know, because if you're here in the U.S. and you're making a certain amount of money, you're driving these types of cars. Maybe you're either driving a Prius or you're driving a, a Benz or you maybe you're driving a Maserati or you, you, whatever it is you're driving. Success to me, it's. It's when you're making a certain amount of income that you're comfortable with that it pay you pay you're able to pay your bills you're able to take care of your kids you're able to put them you know maybe in the private school that they they want that they don't have to go to public school or maybe that 
you get to finally drive the dream car. You get to have that. That Tesla. That Tesla, exactly. You get to have that Tesla. Maybe several Teslas, a, a, a garage, a 12, a 12 um, car, garage. car garage of Teslas, exactly, where you're having, you know, maybe a three-story house or maybe you're having a private property, a gated, a gated community, inside of a gated community with a private house. To me, success is to whatever that person, that their income that they're making to where it comes to the point where they don't even have to work anymore. Yeah. To where the money's coming in passive, to where it's residual income, where they make they're literally sleeping, and they're making income at the same time. So success to me, it's still where the point we don't have to work anymore. To where you can put your feet up, and you're just having the money coming in. You know, you're living the life. You're with your significant other. You know, you're with the kids, and you can actually not have to worry about having to go to work every day, having to go to a nine to five every day, having to stress every day. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to take my kids to school? Who's going to take my kids to school? Who's going to actually, you know, take them under their wing and show them how to coach them? You actually have time to go out to coach them. Success is to the point where you don't have to worry about doing everything yourself, where you can pay people to do it for you, like having a butler to go wash your car, to clean your clothes, to take your kids to school like success there's so many ways and so many meanings of success it's all about what success you want exactly yeah and so like a lot of people don't understand like probably like 30 percent of celebrities as you want to call it celebrities or famous people or just people well known people those people didn't go to school like they didn't go to college for their degree in music or film Mm -hmm. a lot of them learned on their own they took that dream and they just ran with it Mm -hmm. once you have like a set mind you just run with it but like a lot of people don't understand like yes school like if you want to be a doctor dentist or if you want to be like a law enforcement person not even a law enforcement person a lawyer a lawyer exactly if you want to be a lawyer or just like other things like uh, i don't i don't even know man like In sales, yes, you need, like, school and everything like that. But, like, a lot of people don't understand, like, if you have a dream and a vision, you could just run with it without school. Everything just takes experience. And and a prime example is with you, man. You had, you had, you went to school. You dropped out of school and you fully, like, uh, committed to film and all of that stuff. And you just, you're skyrocketing. You've been in it. I say two, not even two years. You've been in like a year and a half, two years. For film? For film. Next month Next month is actually going to make two years. So May. Yes. We'll make two years. Mm-hmm. May of 2021 will make two years. Yes. Okay. So you've been in it for a, a year. 11 point, months. 11 months, point nine. <laughs> but, but you've been in it for like over a year and you, you're you being very successful. You have a couple of things that are under your belt right now that are public and some things that you don't have public. But one thing that you have public is that you're a film director and you edit all the videos for Nick Briz. Yeah. A big influencer, a big basketball player at that, and you edit all the videos. How did you come with that? So I was actually um, working with a company and – they worked with a lot of viral um, influencers, and I was the one that was making all the ads for them, you know, going to the shoots and filming for them. So I filmed for, like, a few people, like Jorge Mazadov. He is the fastest uh, knockout uh, um, fastest knockout in the UFC right now. Um, Paige Van Zandt, she's actually another uh, UFC fighter. Shannon Briggs, two-time heavyweight champion, um, who was uh, NFL player Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Um, he pays for the Green Bay Packers in a... Uh, Trevor Bell, he's um, very viral on TikTok. A lot of influencers. And one of them, another one was Nick Briss. And he's um, a viral dunker. Very, very good at basketball. You know, he has incredible bounce. And I was working with that company. And um, Nick actually came up to me one day. And he was like, hey, man, you know, um, we actually both live in Orlando. We back both live in Florida. You know, why won't we just collab and make some YouTube videos sometimes? And I was like, I heard him out. You know, he uh, showed me what he had to offer. I was like, I, why not? You know? great great opportunity because someone always told me you know you never know what's on the other side of that door to actually open it open it with the right key and see what's see what's in store for you so uh i heard him out and it made sense and i was like sure you know let's collab let's make some videos and so now you're permanently his film director yes me and my boy stan me and your boy stan let's give out a shout out to stan because Stan the man stan couldn't make it right now he's actually on his way here but stanley He's a, a prime example of a nice and genuine and professional person. He obviously has an impact on Jacoby's life and just a whole bunch of things. But you guys really work together and make you you three 
mm-hmm. you, Stan, and Nick make a beautiful video. How did you guys all learn how to edit? Even if you don't know how Nick or Stan, but how did you learn how to edit? So <laughs> a lot of people always ask me, you know, how do you move so fast? How do you edit like this? How do you do the things that you're doing in photography? Oh, my God, that's so cool. Oh, my God, why are you going so fast? And I always think, like, honestly, like, I'm not even moving that fast. I'm going at my own pace. Sometimes I just be, you know, laid back, just editing, you know, going slow, going, um, you know, second by second, minute by minute. And it's just second nature to me. You know, when you're, uh, you muscle know, memory. Yeah, exactly. Muscle memory, wh- wh- whatever you want to call it. You know, when you're, when you're a baby, you're crawling, you know, you're crawling, you're crawling. Eventually, you know, you get in the walker and you, you know, you're, you're taking baby steps. Then from the baby steps, you actually begin to walk. Mm-hmm. And then from beginning to walk, you're actually jogging. And from jogging, you're actually running. And then from running, you're actually full on sprinting. Then you see yourself in track and you're doing the hundred marathon. meters. Then you're doing the hurdles. Then you're doing the marathon, the triathlon. And it just keeps going and going and going. And it comes to the point where it's like second nature. Like it's like riding a bike. It's like swimming. You know, it's kind of like poetry and motion. It becomes second nature to you. So when someone asks me, how do I learn? I just tell them <laughs> YouTube University. It's not a thing, <laughs> but I keep telling YouTube. They did actually need to come out with a university because you can learn so much just from YouTube. Yeah. And not only YouTube, I'd say my biggest factor of learning is experience because just going through certain things, going through certain emotions, actually going through just life you learn so much just through experience and not only just youtube but i just say experience and if you want to learn something guys you just have to go out there and do it because there's not you won't get a better experience doing it yourself rather than asking people you have to actually go out and do it and get your own experience from it you know exactly and so when did you actually start focusing into videography and film or photos got it that's a great question if I had to put my mind to it, because he's actually, only been in it for like a year and a half, one point nine months, one in eleven months, yeah. or one year and eleven months, but like he's already accomplished a lot in just that. So I just want to know, like, how long did it take you to get to this point? Great question. Um, if I had to say when I actually started taking it serious, because before May, actually, I want to count May as taking it serious because before then, I and back in twenty nineteen of February, I was actually just taking pictures and modeling. So I didn't actually start taking it serious till I won't don't want to say May. I probably say October of 2019 because people were like, because originally how I got started, I was just taking pictures, taking pictures, taking pictures, and we've that, done a couple. Yeah, exactly. And I was actually modeling though for I wanted to be an ambassador for Adidas because I love Adidas. You know that. Like for you guys that don't know, I love Checks Adidas. Over stripes. All right, <laughs> man, That's what I but like. I, I, I love Adidas, and not just because a lot of people ask me why do you like Adidas. I just like the brand. You know, I just like the stripes. I love the um fashion that they have in 2019 i was just taking pictures and my buddy reese he was like hey man i have a camera all i need is sd card we can take some professional pictures all right cool get the sd card and we started taking pictures so we had our first uh shoot in february uh 2019 and after that i came home grandpa was like hey man i have i see you taking all these pictures you know what are you trying to do and i was like honestly i'm i like adidas you know i'm just trying to get a um um you know becoming a sponsorship become an influencer with them he was like well, I have a camera. You can use it. It's in the cabinet. I was like, really? So I picked it up and I actually still have that camera today. You know, it's right over there. I have that camera today. Um, you know, I still use it on shoots because you you never, guys, you get you never want to forget where you came from. And I always, always keep that camera. Always got to keep it. Yeah. And, you know, always you want to remain humble and always remember where you came from. And from there, we started with a few businesses and, you know, we just needed content. We needed content. It, living in this new generation you need content people need to see what you do and if you aren't promoting it so me and my buddy reese we decided to you know for these new businesses that we came up with we needed content so me and reese became the content uh creators for the company and you know once may came you know we were making cover art for artists you know we were making flyers and everything and people were like you're actually getting good at taking pictures you're actually getting good at this stuff you should start charging and i was like honestly you're right and so after may until now i started taking it more seriously and, man, it's a blessing because it gets you in so many markets. Like, a lot of people need what you do, especially living in, you know, 2021. A lot of people need content. A lot of people need videos, pictures, you know, ads. They need it made. Especially living in a popular place like Central Florida. <laughs> exactly. Right on. Yeah. You know, just Florida alone, man. Florida alone. And this is, like, a very, like, known state out of all the 50. And, honestly, sometimes I look over and not being grateful for living here. And, like, we're really Bless just not only for the weather, even though it's bipolar, but for the location. <laughs> like a lot of people want to move here. Yeah. 
And so you got into sports, you were with the company, and that's how you got into sports? So I actually always wanted to shoot sports photography. I like in sports video, like I, I love sports growing up, you know. I know I was always better than you. you know, that, that, bro, <laughs> let's not get into that conversation because right, you right, were right. not better than right. me. Well, whatever helps you sleep at night. But anywho, <laughs> I always like sports and you know, sports is like has my heart and but just shooting sports, it limits you, you know. You, you not it's not always about the income, but it's about the people you're gonna meet. Like if I'm just doing sports, I can't pe- meet people that want to do weddings. I can't meet people that want to do graduation shoots. I can't meet people that just want to do a regular shoot if I'm just doing uh, sports. So I w- I want to be known for doing everything, 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 and not not just for sports. I just want to be because people will come up to you. Do you know how to do this? And I can't be like, Nah, actually, I don't know how to do. I want to be like, Oh yeah, I've done that before. I know how to do this. Or I want to be like, Okay, I might not have known how to do. I don't know how to do this. I might not have done it before, but I can do this. Or I want to learn how to do this. And it's all about not limiting yourself because we're all human. You know, we all make mistakes. None of us are perfect, but the man above. And that job's, it's already taken. But my point is, you have to take that chance and actually see what you're capable of, what you, you know, what you can do. And if you're limiting yourself, putting those limiting beliefs, but how do you, what do you know what you can actually do? Exactly. And so, like, what do you see yourself doing? Like, obviously... You and Nick have a really good relationship, and you're going to be filming with him for a while. But outside of of the whole Nick thing, what do you see yourself doing as Jacoby Pettidou or as Cobes 2 Wavy? Cobes 2 Wavy, love that. Um, So my long-term vision, what I actually want to do, I want to be a film director. So, so you want to be like on the Marvel scenes? Kind of thing. <laughs> I wouldn't say the Marvel scenes. You know, whether it's weddings, whether it's commercials, whether it's uh, whatever it is, whether it's sports, I just want to be the person that directs it. You know, I can always hop behind the camera and, you know, deal with the lights, deal with the audio, but I want to know how to do all of it so I can, you know, leverage it and delegate each task so I can get an audio person, I can get a cameraman, I can get a lights man, I can get an audio man, and I can pay them. See, exactly. you can... Being a film director, you want to know how to do each thing, which I'm for- focusing on. Like, like I've not mastered everything, but I know how to do just as much of each audio, lighting, uh, camera work, and everything, and editing. You just want to be able to, because you, you got to know how to duplicate yourself. If you don't know how to duplicate yourself and you're just work, you're overworking yourself, man. You're overworking yourself, and that's going to burn you out. It's going to tear you down, and then it's to the point where you're just so drained you can't do anything. So I want to be able to be able to delegate tasks to where I can, you know, leverage tasks to where I can give everyone a specific role and pay them and pay them a good amount. So where they actually want to work with me and not, it's not always about the money. It's about the relationship that you're going to build. Cause if these people know that you actually care about them, they're going to give more hard work. They're going to give all like 10 toes. They're going to want to work with you. They're going to want to build a relationship with you. If they actually know you care, not everything yeah. in life is about the money. Yeah, we need money. We need to get paid. We need to pay our bills. But what's the money about if people don't care about you? You have to know what a person actually wants. And that's just a relationship. Exactly. And so how did you come up with the names Cope to Wavy? Because I know I know <laughs> damn well you had a mohawk your whole life. <laughs> that's funny, man. That's funny. I did have a mohawk. <laughs> I literally <laughs> you had a mohawk, dude. What comes up with Cope to so, Wavy? So I uh let's see here. Um I'd say back in senior year, senior year of high school, all my boys in my circle, they got a haircut. And they're like, let's get waves. And I was like, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. And they were like, let's get waves. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go with this. So I went ahead, chopped my hair off, you know, started brushing. And it was it's kind of cool just brushing and seeing how your hair can actually wave up and get nice like that. And I just started getting waves. And, you know, my nickname, my real name is Jacoby, but I go by Kobe at times. And I just came with the name of, you know, you know how we back in the day we had spams and stuff like that. Yeah. So I changed my name to Kobe's Too Wavy as a spam name. And I just took it and ran with it at that point. You know, I was like, okay, well, it's already um, a cool, catchy name. I kind of like it. You know, let me just stick with it and keep it. So Kobe's Too Wavy. And it originally came from my hair. But at this point, it's just the wave, man. You know, it is the wave. It's just the wave. That's how you go with things. <laughs> We're going to take a second to just, you know, look at my shirt. <laughs> says Cobes to Wavy. Shout out to Cobes to Wavy. Shout out to Kobe Pettidou, man. If I'm not wearing my own merch, I'm wearing this merch. Cobes to Wavy it is very comfortable. You can wear it. He has polos. He has jackets. He has shorts. He has socks. He has 
everything that you need, guys. And if you guys go look on his website, Coach2Wavy.com, everything is there. It's very cheap. It's very affordable. And it doesn't shrink in the dryer. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> it does not shrink in the dryer. And it is very, very good. So everybody go down, uh, go to Cobes to Wavy. We'll leave it in the link down below in the descriptions. Everybody go there. Uh, if you're not going to catch the wave, I don't know what you're doing. So everybody catch the wave and let's ride. <laughs> My man, appreciate that, bro. Yeah, of course, man. But um, so besides that, people don't understand why you're dressed up right now. People don't understand. People don't. They're probably like, what, what's happening? Let's let's get them into the mindset of what happens when you dress up, how people think. Got it. So listen, man, if I came here, let me ask you a question. If I came here in a tank top, no sli- uh, slides, no socks, and some small gym pants, sagging, what would you think of me? I would think that you are somebody from the hood. You are somebody who doesn't really care about an interview, things like that. Exactly. And let me ask you, if I came in here, you know, if I had my coat on and I was nicely dressed, you know, with... That's nice not being stereotype or anything. That's just... Of course. How it is. You just don't care. Exactly. But if I came dressed like I am today, you know, you saw me, you didn't know me before. I can't, you saw me in the public having a nice coat on and everything, you know, nice watch, nice loafers. What would you think of me? You're a successful man. Exactly. You know, in life, it's all about perspective. It's all about a lot of people judge a book by its cover. And I'm not being cliche, cliche about it, but a lot of people judge a book by its cover. It's not about, you know, what someone's wearing. It's about it's really about your, your approach, your appearance, because your first, you know, every time someone looks at you for the first time, they see your first appearance is everything. So if they see this image of you in a wife beater and a tank top with slides on, they're going to think of, OK, he's not nothing. He's nothing. I sh- I shouldn't pick this conversation. I shouldn't speak to that man about my finances. But if they didn't know I do f- uh, photography, if they didn't know I do finances, they didn't know I'm the person I am. But they see me dressed up like this. They're more likely to ask someone, what do you do who's dressed up in a coat rather than a wife beater? So everything is all about appearance. That People want to see someone that is well-dressed, that looks you know, more to par than someone that's not. And they'll feel more comfortable speaking to you than that someone that's dressed up. You know, Does that make sense to you? It does. I just want to know, are those tulips on your uh, shirt? <laughs> to be real with you, man, I don't know what these are. I do, what I do know is that this is actually made out of plastic bottles. You know, I bought this. I actually bought this in Macy's, and the tag said made out of plastic bottles. Like, you can actually feel feel it. It's, like, nice and silk. Like That is nice and silk. <laughs> it's, like, nice and silk. It's I didn't made know plastic, out of plastic bottles could do that. Honestly, I didn't either. I just <laughs> bought it. I was like, okay, let me ride with it. It's actually one of my favorite shirts, man. I, I, I don't see you wear it too often because you have a whole bunch of stuff. But, <laughs> I mean, I do, I've do. i seen it multiple times, and I, I do like it. I, I, I like the vibe. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. And so everybody just follow Jacoby on Instagram at Cobes 2 wavy his photography page, his videography page. If you haven't yet, you're missing out. This man is brilliant. If you don't know, Jacoby, Jacoby, should I just start calling you Kobe? Like in what front I, of everybody, Cobes to Wavy. Like <laughs> that's really shit. Go have, for it, man. Go for Cobes it. Cobes to Wavy has has literally been a mentor for me through this whole podcast journey and just everything. Yes, I have my own merch and I don't have a link out, but like he's even been a a, a mentor for me through that. He is a very brilliant guy. His mind is like a fifty year old man at the age of twenty one. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous, and I I don't understand how. How did you become, like, how did you get this mindset? Like, yes, there's reading books and things like that, but, like, your mindset is different from a whole bunch of people. Well, there's a few things. Yeah, there's books. You know, books um, Books are important. Like, there's a lot of things that you need to read because the crazy thing about books is people have been through the same experiences that you're going through. Remember, we're all human. So there's, like, a lot of people that have walked this earth that have been through literally the same exact things that you're going through. And the crazy thing is, is that we're very fortunate that not only did they live before us, but they were looking out for us because why? They put it in books. They put it in books and published it for us to read it so that we can learn from their mistakes. We can learn what we do, what to do better, what to not do, how we can improve on our skills. And the thing about books is it's crazy. It's I never, ever in school, you know, in life, I never liked reading besides Diary of a Wimpy Kid and Captain Underpits. But now Same actually books. being and <laughs> being into um, more of learning about myself, learning about the human body, learning about uh, uh, more, learning more about yourself and personal development and uh, psychology about the human body and how it works. It's very interesting. Like things just become very interesting to you on how the body works. And 
personal development and reading books, it's very important. Why? Because you just have to read. Like, it might be annoying. Like, there's even audio books for people that don't like to read. Like, personally, I don't like to read. I tried audio driving and listening to audio. That works, too. It's just about being, you know, more productive. But, man, you just got to read, 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 whatever it is. Like, I, I, I can recommend so many books, but every book is not for everyone. You know, it's all about what you want to read, whether it's business, whether it's sales, whether it's personal development. Personally, Harry Potter, <laughs> Harry Potter. Yeah, at least you're reading something. Entertainment stuff. Exactly. Like but personally, I like reading um, personal development because I like knowing more about myself. Exactly. You know, I like learning more about myself, learning more about the human body, learning what more is it to it that we can learn as ourselves about humans that can make me not only improve as a human being, but improve the other people around me, improve my circle and let them know. So as long as I, I, I feel good in learning that the things I'm learning, I'm pouring into others because they're learning as well. And what exactly. are they going to do? They're going to do the same exact thing, pour into others. And what's that going to take? Uh, what's that going to create? A domino effect. Everyone's continuing to learn. So as long as I'm growing, I know that others around me are growing. You know, they could do their part and grow more. But as long as I'm pouring into them, I know they're growing. So you know what I just remembered? What's up? That we had Miss Weger together. At Lake Mary High School, when I went to Lake Mary for the one year, it was film. You were, like, really? It was me, you. And I'm not gonna say the name, but it was a so and so. Oh, you you getting in trouble all the time? <laughs> Damn, bro. Right? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I was getting in trouble, but I mean, <laughs> standing up in the back of the. Oh, yeah, I ain't gonna expose you like that, but yeah. I, right, I mean, I'm not hiding anything. I don't. I mean. It's whatever. I was, yes, job. I was standing up in the back classroom because I was falling asleep during movies that were <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe type shit. But yeah, but man, I really wish I paid attention more in that class because it would have benefited me much more. Oh, yeah, me too, man. And I mean, I, I still take away things that I learned in that class, but man, like, those things in school, like, <laughs> what's crazy is, like, I believe in school, like, you go to uh, the kindergarten through 12th for, like... A some, reason. For You really go for a reason, and the things that I take away around away from that so much is like having a planner like being organized like you actually need a planner in life whether it's uh your phone that you use for a calendar or actually a physical calendar you need a calendar these days to stay organized to it uh you know um i say organize and you know track your appointments and you know know what's next know your homework know what you got to do you know and I, I believe that that's a really good aspect that you learn from uh the school you know the public schools and also um something as simple as uh you know when you know when uh um, when you're working with people that you really don't like at school and you're like oh man I don't want that man in my group I really didn't want to pick this group I didn't want this man in my group. in life you're partnering with people that you don't like mm -hmm. and you got to figure it out man you just got to work with them even if, even if you don't like them that's life man you just got to work with them man that's two things that I can actually say that I really have really stuck with me in life and even if I don't like this person I got to work with them you know it is what it is it is what it is and the thing is. The, the one thing that's really stuck with me to that uh, from that class is something that I don't really or I still think to this day, actually, because she said, what, what did she say? She said something. She was like, when you after you take this class, you would never look at a movie the same. And then you start realizing different angles, mm -hmm. it, which is kind of crazy because this is the first pack podcast that we have with different angles. Yeah. And this is because of you, obviously. And so, shout out to Ms. Weger for that. But um, yeah. end of story, that's something that it, it kind of stuck with me because I never watch a movie that is with different angles. Exactly. And uh, crazy that you say that because I watched a video on one of my CEO. His name's Patrick Bay David. He actually posted a video. He was like, someone asked him, hey, Pat, how do you watch movies? And he's like, I actually watch it three times. One time I watch it for fun, for joy. Two, I actually watch it, you know, analyze it from a business perspective and see, you know, what can I learn from this? What can I learn as a business owner? What can I learn life, uh, like life materials? And three, I watch it from a, di a director's perspective. Learn it from I like that view. And, and watch it from a That's... director's perspective and see what it is that the director was thinking, like all the angles, all the audio. Why did he choose this audio? Why did he choose this angle? Why did he choose this to pop up? Why did he choose this extra to walk by at that specific time? But a lot of people don't understand when a director is filming a movie, which you want to be a film director. Mm -hmm. right? So this is, this is kind of perfect for your scenario, which is probably me giving you education. But a lot of people don't understand is when you're directing a movie, you don't edit your own movie. Mm -hmm. It's literally the film director who edits the movie. So the film director gives its vision while you're recording, mm -hmm. and the film director is the one that puts everything together. Exactly. And what they think is nice. Mm -hmm. And that's what they don't really understand is that, like, 
the, they don't give enough credit to the film directors. And now that I see you doing this stuff, <laughs> I start when I watch movies, I'm like, okay, mm. I give credit to the film director because that's something very big. Yeah, other things could happen. So I give you a lot of credit for wanting to do that. Something that's, you know, not really talked about. So exactly, and that goes back to my. Thing about team, you know, teamwork and working as a team, and you know, me, Stan, Nick, working as a team. It's just everybody has to play their role. You know, well, obviously you can duplicate everybody, but everybody has to play their role. Everybody has to have a, spe uh, a specific job and a significant job to where okay, I can take care of that. I can take care of the editing. I can take care of the lights. And being a film director, um, I hit on this earlier a little bit, but I just want to be able to duplicate myself so I can have an editor. You know, I can have someone that shoots. I can have someone that films. I can have someone that takes care of the audio, the lights, and it's like just Like you said easier. earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's a that's a big thing, and that you're going to accomplish that. Appreciate it. I want to get into something that I really means a lot to me. One of my old friends, not my old friends, one of my best friends, uh, Jason, he really uh, said something to me, i say probably my junior, soft, or senior year of high school, mm -hmm. that really stuck with me. The only thing that a man has in this world is their word. Mm -hmm. And what are you and I? Men. So the only thing that men have in this world is their word. And that's something that really stuck to me because a lot of people understand we don't really have much to offer. Yes, we have other things to offer, not for like personality wise, but mm -hmm. like a man only has to offer their word. And if you don't offer your word, then you're I, I personally don't consider you man. After hearing that, that's something that really meant deeply to me. And that me telling you that, what what does that mean to you? You know, there's a lot of things. When, when it comes to keeping your word, you have to remember what you're saying. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they don't care about, you know, what you're wearing, what it is you do for work. They care about you as a person and what you say. So as long as you're keeping your word, you're actually understanding what it is that you're saying and how meaningful those words that are coming out, you know, out of your, t that you're speaking with your tongue that's coming out your mouth. Because at the end of the day, the strongest muscle in your body is a tongue. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you can speak these words into, into, into existence. In into existence <laughs> like manifestation it's really it's, it's real like what do you say like strong words like you know words like being tired you know words about hating things you know words about like the word of love like those even the word i can or i will exactly those. i hope you know those words you just have to take out your vocabulary why because it puts limitations on what you can actually what you i like that you said that because that's something that we all stick by mm -hmm. me you and stan and nick like we all that's our quote of the group Watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Watch your tongue. Sorry to interrupt you, but you keep going. Nah, and, and you just have to be, you have to be aware of what you're speaking about because it doesn't matter what you're saying. It's 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 more about uh, being aware of what you're saying because if you don't know what you're saying, you're just splitting out words that actually comes to life. You can manifest it, and it might not be in a good way that you're manifesting it, but things come to life. So it's more about watching your tongue because you have to actually watch it. It's a very strong muscle in your body. And if you say something that you might just be more emotionally upset, emotionally mad about it, and it just comes out the wrong way, and you speak that into existence, guess what? You just cursed yourself. Okay. Well, we don't want that. We do not want that. Because the man ab above really has a vision for us, and we don't want to jinx anything that yeah, he I has mean, to say. I mean, yes, he controls everything, but I mean... Hey man, we don't want to jinx anything. For example, you, you jinxed me. I mean, listen, guys, we we, we had a photo shoot. Let's oh see, a couple cu couple couple months ago, we had a photo shoot, and you know, we were parked <laughs> in the garage, and the lady was like, "Okay, it's 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 twenty bucks to go up," and I was like, "She said it was ten dollars, ten dollars each, ten dollars, ten dollars each." Oh yeah, man. ten dollars each. So that's basically twenty dollars, twenty dollars. So we tried to save each other's pockets, you know, go half and half. It's like, you know what? There's actually a parking garage outside. Let's go check it out. So we went and checked out the parking lot. It said tow, tow away zone. I didn't think we were going to take long. You know, it was like an hour shoot. We go up to the shoot. And he's like, you know, I feel uneasy about this. I feel like we're going to get towed. And we go up there. We finish the shoot. Have great, great pictures, by the way. You know, we can pop some out real quick. Show, yeah, show we'll the pictures. Show the pictures. One right here. Amazing pictures. One right here. Amazing pictures, by the way. Shoot. And put one right here, Jacob. All right, we'll put one right there. And the, the, the pictures, they came out great. And, of course, my man Akeem over here, my man Jay, he's like, man, let's, let's go. I feel like we're going to get towed. I feel like we're going to get towed. I was like, bro, watch your tongue. Don't say it. Watch your tongue. He's like, I feel like we're going to get towed, man. Let's go. I was like, all right, bro, let's go. Let's go. So we're, we're walking back. You know, Stanley's with us. My boy Stan, he's with us. And, you know, we're just walking. Man. And uh, we get close to the car. And, you know, we see the parking lot. You can see it from a distance. And Stan's walking in front of us. And he's like, where, where's your car? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm just walking. You know, I'm, He's like, Cope, where's your car? And I'm like. 
I'm not even surprised, man. You know, his his tongue is strong. You know, he he already spoke this into existence. My car's gone. And, and, you know, I had to call the tow truck driver and, you know, I had to get my car back. Had to pay a certain. I thought it was going to be expensive. But it was not expensive. And got my car back. And it, the tow truck guy broke your car. You forgot. You don't forget that part. Oh, the car was already broken. He tried to fix it. And oh, okay. that's the point of like actually being positive about certain things. And that. Certain situations, you can turn a, a negative into a positive, actually and learn from it and meet people about it. So my point is, guys, watch your tongue because what you speak is very strong. Got, dude got me told. I got him told, yes, but at, I just want to be honest with you guys. That was before I actually knew the word of <laughs> tongue, and I wasn't meaning to speak it into existence like it was going to happen. I was meaning like I'm being realistic, and yes, there's a difference between being realistic and then there's – a difference between having the word of tongue and speaking things into <laughs> existence and manifesting what's going to happen. I didn't mean to manifest that was going to happen, but <laughs> we're going to just say that. But of course, it came to an outcome because now that that happened, Jacoby knew how to work his car. So the man above helped us learn something that Jacoby didn't know, and he could have spent three, four hundred dollars on to fix. Now he knows exactly. how to do it free. <laughs> Saves exactly. money. Everything happens for a reason, man. Everything happens for a reason. So. I really, I'm very, just very curious on what is to come for you, man, because I just really think that you are going to be someone up top. You're going to be the next top producer or top film director. You are somebody, like, your your mind is just very different, and nobody understands, nobody knows, except for the people that know you. Mm-hmm. And it's going to happen, and I'm I'm speaking that into existence. You're <laughs> going to become successful before. You guys, hear that the tongue. <laughs> yeah, the word of tongue. But you're going to become success, successful before any uh, anybody else I know. Really, who mentored you to be this way? Because obviously, you you always had like a strong mind growing up. Because I've known you for so long, but like other than your mom, who who really put that in your brain at at a late age because you know we're teenagers and we're just thinking things so other than my mom like losing her at a young age it actually puts you in a mindset of saying like anything can happen like you need to be prepared and that's one of the reasons i actually got in the insurance industry because you just need to be prepared but the reason i actually got in the insurance industry which leads me to my mentor his name's jonathan mason he actually he's part of the insurance industry that i'm in life insurance industry and he's actually mentored me to be you know aware of my surroundings and aware of like the books that I read aware of like the, how to actually network and talk to people how to dress properly like he's actually sat me and Stanley down one time and he's like hey guys you know being in this industry this is a very old thousand uh, you know a few thousand year in- industry that you know a lot of people that are in this industry uh, like a lot of your clients that you're going to be speaking to they're very like they're not old but when it comes down to it, like there's a lot of elders people and a lot of people don't want to speak to someone that's young about their finances. A lot of people don't want to speak to you about their 401ks, their IRAs, their mutual funds, their CDs, whatever it is. Like you have to keep in mind that we're very young, upcoming entrepreneurs. We're very young. And a lot of people don't want to speak to you about their finances. So you have to dress apart. Like, like like I was speaking to you earlier, like a lot of people isn't going to trust someone with their finances that are in a tank top and slides, you know, with no socks on. You have to come presentable. Whether it's a polo tee, you know, whether it's an actual coat, you know, a button up, you have to know how to dress. I even took my earrings out. I, don't, I didn't have them for long, maybe two years, but I took the earrings out because you have to have the professional look that actually suits you to be in that specific field that you're in. And that was my personal mentor, man. Him and uh, our CEO, Patrick Bet David. Um, that's our CEO, man. If you guys check him out, we can pop up his YouTube channel. I learned a lot. From this man, man. He gives, like, free knowledge, free value. And he's, like, almost $3 million on uh, YouTube at the time, at, at the moment right now. And, man, you, you just learn so much from such individuals that are already at the top tier. Like, top tier making the money that, you know, a lot of people dream of. Living in Fort Lauderdale, living, having the beach house. Like, they, they, they have the dream. And it's just to a point where you want to be like someone like that, you know? You obviously want to be yourself, but they set the... They set the they set the tone for you. Yeah. They, they show you like they 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 sell you the life. They sell you the dream. They show you the lifestyle that you can live. You just got to put in the work in. This is basically what you said. Follow the dream and it, it's going to happen, man. Mm-hmm. And that's basically what I have to say is if you follow the dream, things will happen and it's just going to come to you. Of course. You have to stick with that mindset though. It things turn rough. Have things turned rough for you? Of course. Of course. In the beginning, man. were there things that was rough for you? 
course, man. You, know, you mean life or you mean business? Both. Both. I mean, I mean, having to go to prom with your mother not being here, not being able to walk the stage, man, that's tough. That's really tough. But, you know, life goes on. Everything happens for a reason. Go, going into business, not knowing one thing about it. You know, going from, you know, wearing gym clothes, working at a, a trampoline park during COVID, bro. Keep in mind, I got started in the life insurance industry during, like, literally right before COVID. COVID hit, lost my job, and I was pretty much cornered into going full-time photography, full-time insurance. That's not the easiest transition. It's, it's not. I'm not saying that's the easiest transition for myself, but easiest transition for the whole world. Im- imagine that happening. That happened for everyone in the world. That's not easy, man. And you didn't get unemployment. Like, that's, people don't understand that. I didn't even know about an unemployment. Yeah. <laughs> Until now, or I mean, until a couple months ago, I was a boy told me that uh, he made twenty two thousand. Like, wow! I mean, gosh, that's crazy. Uh huh. It's good, but I mean, once you make it out the mud, that's really what matters. And exactly. I did, I really didn't want to bring up your mom, and I know you said like we could, but like without her, what have things? What has changed really from being? I don't even know how old you you were. 16, 17 years old, and you lost her, man. I, got I think that. I was 18 turning 19. And so your question was, like, what's changed? Like, in the business aspect, like losing somebody that was super dearly to you. I mean, business aspect, when the reason that I actually really got started in this insurance industry is because I lost her in 2018, and this business opportunity of life insurance that I never knew about, that I was never educated about, got presented to me in 2020. So it showed me how... Much like you can actually change someone's life, be just simply being educated with a fifteen minute presentation on how much life could be like, how much different life can be. Imagine me being eighteen, my mother having an insurance policy on herself for half a million dollars that she paid what thirty, forty dollars a month for. Once she passed away, that money would have came to my family, mm-hmm. me, my siblings, and I would have been able to do what? Put that money into savings, you know, take care of anything, take care of whatever, whatever it being. I would say it, te- it it taught me to be mentally tough because in the world of business, a lot of things happen to you. You know, people cheat, people cheat on you. People don't pay you. People, a lot, a lot of people cancel on you. It teaches you to be mentally tough. And without being mentally tough, what what are you really? You don't really have much. Yeah. Because a lot of people can push you over. A lot of people can run over you. A lot of people just say, okay, he's not about his business. Let's take his money. No, you have to be tough. You have to be firm. You have to have a foundation. And losing her. I always say it's a blessing in disguise because it made me stronger and you have to be mentally tough in the world of business. That right there is a very mature thing to do. Just saying that's a blessing in disguise. Yes. It's a very devastating that you lost your mom, but like for you to admire something like that is like to, to toughen you at such a young age, like you're 21 years old. That's something very different. I don't think I would be able to do that just because like, that's just who I am. I'm I'm a cancer, so I mean I'm very sensitive, so it's a little different. <laughs> I am sensitive, but like for you to be able to do that and to know your worth is very very mature. Of course, it's all about knowing your worth. Exactly, and I just want to like hear your like your pitch for the insurance because you keep mentioning the insurance and what is your pitch going through when you go either door to door sales or just you know talking to somebody. <laughs> It's funny you ask because I don't do any door to door. No, you don't do any door to door. I don't do any door to door. I don't do any cold callings. You know, it's all word of mouth. Just like photography. Like I got a few leads today just from people knowing I do photography and I got leads. So it's not more of me going out knocking on doors, calling random people saying, Hey, my name is Jacoby. I do life and shit. <laughs> nah, it's not like that. <laughs> hey, my name is Jake, Jake from State Farm. I do life and shit. No, it's not like that. Insurance, it's, it's more natural, man. You have to go meet people. You have to go network. You can't just go up to someone and say, Hey, Buy insurance for me. No, it's not like that, man. Exactly. It's not like that. Every scenario is different. Every person is different. You have to actually care for someone. You have to actually dig deep, peel back the onions. You know, my CEO made a video. and He was like peeling back. You know how uh, um, Superman, he takes his chest off. You have to keep pulling takes back. Suit man. Off, yeah. You have to keep pulling back and actually know what someone cares about. You have to actually build a relationship, a fruitful relationship with someone. So they actually, they actually know that you care about them. Not that you're just coming out here for a sale. Not that you're just coming out for, you know, for the money, for the commission. Coming the out end, for a bond. Exactly. You have to come for a bond. You have to come for a fruitful relationship. You have to show these people that you actually care about them. And if they know that you actually care, they're going to buy you. Because people don't buy the product. They buy you. If they, if they know that you care, they're going to buy from you. 
it, at the end of the day, the it, the product could be what whatever it is, Girl Scout cookies. You know why people buy from the Girl Scouts? Because they're so cute. They're adorable. They actually had the courage to come up and buy, you know present their product. You know why people buy from the lemonade stand? Because they actually put the effort in. They show the they see the respect. They see the free lemonade. You know, 50, 50 cent lemonade. They see that. Yeah. They see the hustle. They respect the grind at a young age. They're gonna buy from you. Why? Not because you're demanding. Not because you're pitching. Because you. You're, you're, you're more outgoing, you know, you care about them. They actually show that you're trying, you know. So when sales, a lot of people think of sales as more of abrasive, you know, aggressive, saying people, oh, my God, you got to buy this now, you know. I'm knocking on your door, you know, come buy this now. Nah, uh, sales is more about, you know, educating, you know, showing people what it is you do. See, if you educate people on how insurance is more, you know, more for retirement more for savings how insurance has evolved you know it's not that you can just access the money while you're, you're when you're when you're dead then goes to the family you can access the money while you're living a lot of people don't know that you can access the money while you're living and what is what what do you mean by that so by living benefits what, what's your perspective on life insurance life insurance when you die you get a check <laughs> exactly and that check goes to your family like look, look man 99 percent of people will tell me life insurance when you die it pays it goes to the family what if i told you life insurance has now evolved Look at it like this. God forbid you get in a car accident. You know, you can't work anymore. You know, you get in a car accident, you crash. You know, you get stroke, you know, cancer, uh, heart attack, critically ill. You can't work anymore. What's the average person going to do? I don't know. <laughs> exactly. They they can't work anymore. What's, what's that one thing that's gonna not going to stop coming? The bills. Bills, yeah. That, ooh. The bills. Got me on that one. The bills not going to stop coming. And at the end of the day, you got to pay your bills. And what do most people do? You know how much it is for long-term care? How much? On the low end in Florida, it's like 10 bands. You know, a lot of people don't have $10,000 just to, you know, throw out and say, here you go. You, do you know what long-term care is? No. Long-term care is like a nurse at your home taking care of you, you know, washing your behind and taking care of you and, you know, making sure that everything is nice and set for you, just taking care of you. That's on the low end. That's like 10000 The insurance company say, hey, you can, you, you can actually tap into your insurance policy and say, say you have like 500000 You could tap into that insurance policy up to one to five years, up to, you know, 80% to take care of your mug. What is that? That's your, your mortgage, your utilities, your groceries. You can actually use that insurance money. Not only when you're, you know, when you're dead, God forbid if that were to happen, not only when you're dead, but when you're living. So a lot of people don't know that. And there's so many things that people don't know about insurance that they need to be educated by because I don't want people to be in the same position I was. Thank God that my, my, my best friend Stanley introduced me to this industry because he put me, he made me so aware of so many things that I didn't know. About, uh, one about finances, uh, two about personal development, and three about life, like it's all life is about the people you meet and the meetings you attend and the books you read. And if it wasn't for this company, if it wasn't for this industry, you know, I, I learned a lot in photography, but if it wasn't for this industry and the life insurance industry, I wouldn't be where I am today. And you are at a, at a good spot at a 21 year old. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. Not where I want to be, but I'm working towards it. Exactly. Um, I just want to say thank you for coming on to this podcast. I got a little gift for you. Oh, snap. Gift, gift for me. Whoa. A little gift to you. Whoa, uh, whoa, little, whoa, what we got here? Oh, I keep the dream merch. It ain't code too wavy, but it's I it ain't code too wavy, but that's the dream. <laughs> it's the dream. I'll take it. Let's I guess see. I'm officially. You're part of the dream, man. You have part the, dream. Of the dream. Yes, sir. Love that. I love that merch, man. I appreciate you taking me on today, man. Oh, you know. Even though we had to refilm this, I had a great time the second go around, man. Oh, yeah, I had a great time, man. I appreciate you coming on, and I appreciate you even doing a double take. <laughs> you know, things don't happen how they want to in life, and you learn that going through. Just of like course. we didn't want the first half to, you know, be interrupted by the <laughs> thorn, as you said earlier. But um, Listen, man, what is not delayed happened. is not denied. What's not, not delayed is what is not denied. Amen. I just want to let everybody know, man, once we hit a thousand subscribers, I will be giving away a PlayStation 5. And if you don't know, I do not have a PlayStation Sheesh. 5 myself. You want to win that PlayStation 5? I'll take it. If nobody wanted to, I'll take it. Are nobody you subscribed? Am I subscribed? Are you subscribed? Of course I'm subscribed. He subscribed. If nobody gets it, like Jacoby has the opportunity to get it, man. And once we hit a thousand oh. subscribers, I will be giving away a PlayStation 5. So stay tuned. I don't have one myself. Jacoby doesn't have one. Stanley doesn't have one. Oh, by the way, if you were wondering, Stanley uh, showed up finally, you know. He <laughs> left church. He came back from the victory lap, and he's successful. That's Stanley. Stan the man's here. Stan the man. Stan the man. We don't have Nick here, but it's whatever. The whole team's not together, but the whole team's together. 
I just want to say shout out to Jacoby for coming on here and giving me his merch because this is also something very important to me. It's likewise, man. It's it's important to him. Whatever is important to him is important to me. Like this, that's real. I mean, I'm telling you, you see the K. If it's, you're looking deeply, Jacoby, when you edit this, zoom in real quick. <laughs> you see the K deeply. It's a wave. You see right here. It's a wave. It's a big wave. It's a big, big wave. That's the wave everyone needs to ride because this is for a bigger thing than just money. This is bigger than just anything. This is for letting people know that this is something very more than money and success. This is for something that is for years and years to come, or not to come, but years and years to pass, like, going to be giving this down to kids we're going to be giving this down to grandkids we're giving it implement to everybody who has a dream make sure you are following your dream and we will be collabing soon so just stay tuned hey amen it's a legacy you ride the wave it's the dream wave <laughs> amen all right everybody follow jacoby on instagram at cobes to wavy or jacoby Petadu. if you don't know how to spell that he'll let you know because it's a little tongue twister <laughs> yeah i appreciate that <laughs> appreciate you having me on man oh no problem man. <laughs> all right uh, let them know your Instagram. Oh, I thought you were going to say Jacoby Pettidue. Oh, it's my main profile and Cobes 2 Wavy. Cobes 2 Wavy. Jacoby I'll put it Pettidue. up. I'll put it up. He put it up. Again, he's going to put it up right here. No, nah, right. Right over the candle because, you know, we we lit, we lit the vibe. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody shout out to the wave, man. Akeem's out. <laughs>